Hello, and welcome to the Kaj. I'm your host, Timber Smith. And once again, it is a wonderful, 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 beautiful Saturday morning. Uh, yeah, I'm going to call it out. You know what? I just keep it 100 in the sense that if it's crap outside, I'll call it as crap outside. But if it's gorgeous outside, I'm going to say it's gorgeous outside. But today, today feels extra special to me just because as somebody who worked in higher ed, like today is graduation day for a lot of college students. So like it's in the air, um, that happiness, um, you know what it is now that I've been on both sides of the fence as someone who walked the stage, but also had a child who walked the stage. Well, she really didn't cause she graduated during COVID, which sucked, but nonetheless, um, I know the excitement of the parent, side of it when that journey is done so we can push them out the nest and they can get to that thing called adulting right <laughs> i'm just saying let's get to the adulting part all right um so fantastic morning this morning and um today i'm gonna i'm gonna i might have to pop in over at uwo and go see a, a student or two walk across the stage because it's such a special day okay but, you know, more importantly, you know, once again, as I always say, I don't know why I get so lucky, but I get the most fabulous, fabulous guests. Um, so without further ado, this week's guest is Don Goldkey. Hey, Don. Hi, Timber. Don, did I screw that up? No, you got it perfect. Hey, you see that, y'all? I do not always slaughter everybody's last name. I'm I'm batting about 10%. <laughs> <laughs> it works. It's my husband's name anyway. Oh, oh there you go. That's right. It's okay then, right? Yeah. See? <laughs> I don't know whether whether to feel good about that or bad about that because I'm team husband. So, you know, we, we husbands, we got to stick together sometimes. <laughs> well, we can put Greg out on his own. <laughs> oh, fair enough. Fair enough. I love it. All right. Well, um, Don, we're going to jump in. And um, can you please share a little something about yourself? And uh, what is your connection to the Kosh? And if not the Kosh, the Fox Cities? Well, I was born and raised in Appleton, Wisconsin. So I am definitely homegrown here. Oh, okay. Appleton East Patriot. So go Patriots. Oh. Um, so we can get into talking about North, too, at some time, and we can do some North slamming. Um, oh, <laughs> wow. I'm not mad about that. Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, those lines run deep. What can I say? Oh, yeah. Oshkosh has them. Oshkosh has it. Oh, uh, goodness gracious. Osh, you know, Oshkosh North and Oshkosh West, mm-hmm. those are deep lines. Even though the, the students themselves, they all kick it. They do. In fact, uh, my stepson graduated here as well so okay I moved around a little bit after I graduated um college in lacrosse I went over to Sheboygan for a while then I went down to a little teeny spot called Monroe Wisconsin about 30 minutes south of Madison Ooh, that's one of those places I know nothing about it's in the middle of nowhere hey I'm gonna continue to not know anything about (laughs) Monroe Wisconsin Great, great people down there. Really, truthfully, great people. And it's right next to New Glarus, too. Oh, the only thing I know about them is beer. Yep. That would be it. I'm just saying. (laughs) Um, We moved back here, though, in uh, 2005. Um, Mason had two years of school to go through, so we settled here in Oshkosh um, over on the west side. Okay, so you got some cash time in. Yeah. Awesome. Absolutely love it, but now I'm a Kimberly snob over in the Harrison area. So oh. We have an identity crisis. I don't know if you know that area. Bruh. No. So <laughs> Appleton address, Kimberly School District, Harrison, and Buchanan Utilities. My God, what else do we have there? Oh, that just sounds confusing. It's very confusing. That, that sounds like a hot mess. Um, and some people still call us Darboy, too. So Oh, <laughs> Wow. Right. I don't know. Okay. That's pretty cool. All right. But you know the region well. Yeah. All right. Fantastic. Okay. Are you ready to jump into the first segment? Sure. All right. The first segment is what in the world is going on with? This is your opportunity to get a little bit, say a little something, start with the phrase, what in the world is going on, going on with, and tell us what's on your mind. Well, this one's inspired by my drive here this morning. Uh-oh. 
Um, what in the world is going on with people who drive under the speed limit when there is a patrol officer on the road? Bruh. You're right. We're on 41 going 65. It's 70. Yeah. You felt it made you feel some kind of way? It did. And everyone was boxed in too, so no one could pass. Oh, that's the worst. And you're trying to get ready for an exit, and he's still going slow. It's like, at least speed up to 70, the speed limit, and it was interesting. So you couldn't even do it? Uh Uh-uh. That's sad. I mean, I won't speed in front of a cop, but I'll go within a reasonable range. (laughs) I'm the opposite. Like, my paranoia goes, if I'm not doing, like, what normal drivers do, then I feel like I look suspicious. So, like, if I'm exactly. around a cop, I'm doing about 73, 74. <laughs> I'm being honest. That's how I'm doing it. Bruh. I figure if you do five or six, you're okay. You're right. Because I think the major violation doesn't happen until 15 anyway. So. Um, there's a violation that starts at nine over, if nine I'm over? correct. Okay. Yeah. And I only know this because of my old insurance agent days. Really? Mm-hmm. I cannot see you doing insurance. Oh, I did it for a good little good wow. little piece here. Mm-hmm. Interesting. I, hey, look. You going to sell me something? I wore many hats. I'm going to sell you a t-shirt <laughs> <laughs> that says the cash. <laughs> That's an easy sell. <laughs> so, okay. No, I love that one. Um, my what in the world is going on with let me Let me just frame this. My, what in the world is going on with these skillful servers selling desserts? I'm going to tell you. So, you know, I, I, I have the opportunity. I do lunches now, you know, as mm-hmm. part of my, my professional life, I do lunches and I go out to lunch and I'm not going to lie for the, as long as I can ever remember, I'm not buying no dessert. If I go out to eat, I'm not buying the dessert. It's just not where I'm at. I'm probably already full. I'm probably taking home, uh, taking a box back to the office or back home. But I'm not indulging in dessert. But I'm not going to lie. Lately, these servers are too skillful. Like, they hit me up. And they're like, hey, would you like dessert? No, I'll pass. Then they go through the list anyway. And then I'm like, so then you're thinking about it. Mm-hmm. It's on your mind, right? And they go through this list, and, and let's be honest, there's always something that sounds yummy. Something that's going to make your mouth water. Oh, it totally is. And they know which one it is. Well, it, I, I, you know what? I think they've got to read. I feel like they totally uh. got to read on you. And so then they're going through the list, and then there's something, and I feel like I have a tell. I must have a dessert tell. <laughs> so then they leave, and then they come back. And say, hey, did you think about that? Does that dessert sound good? No, no, no. I don't really want a dessert. I'm good. You know, that table over there is having such and such in there. And then, you know, the minute they say that, you turn around and look. Right? Then you see happy people over there eating Uh dessert. And I was like, man, that kind of looks good. So what's your favorite dessert? Well, sweet. (laughs) (laughs) sweet all right no no definition there at all anything sweet sweet all right so like and i'm not even a sweet sweet person like i'm really more of a salt person than a sweet person but lately they've been getting me so i went i went to and i'm gonna tell you my reason for this what in the world is going on with this so i went to lunch yesterday and at the cozy corner and the cozy I mean, I go there at least usually once a week, get a two-piece catfish. I go there so much that when I walk in, the ladies look at me, they point at me and say, two-piece catfish, red beans and rice? Yes. I just shake my head and they know, right? But I never get the dessert. But they they put the real deal on me yesterday. They put their masterful, skillful host on me. And, hey, would you like a dessert? No, no I don't want no dessert. I'm good. Thank you. You know? How is everything? It's wonderful. Tastes tastes amazing. I'll see you next week. You know we've got this pecan pie, this banana bread pudding, this sweet potato pie. And I'm like, oh, oh, no, 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 not that. And so I was like, and, and I'm going to tell you how good they were. So I, and I'm listening to them get me. She mm-hmm. walks away. She hits the other table, sews them up, sells two desserts, comes back, hits me again, right? And turned around and was like, hey, you know, they over there. You see that? Yeah, I see them. 
They're loving it. Yeah, yeah, they look like it. You want a dessert? No, I don't want no dessert. <laughs> and so then I'm like, I, th- I thought I was safe. She walked away and she came back again. No way. <laughs> and so then I'm like, oh. by then I've been thinking about it. It's on my mind. So I was like, okay, run through the list again. I'm going to get a dessert. So I decided on, uh, well, uh, let me see, what was it? I forgot what it w- initially was because when she, she left and she was, you could tell she was celebrating that she got me on the uh-huh. dessert. She came back. She was like, oh, we're out of that one. I was like, yes, <laughs> I've gotten out of this. The, the dessert gods have smiled on me and gave me an out. Oh, no. So she, she goes, you know what? I forgot to mention, you know, I didn't, it's not for everybody, but we got some caramel cake. Oh my God. Caramel cake is my weakness. That would be it right there. That was it. It's the sauce. Yeah. And then, you know what she did to me? Bruh. She offered ice cream. <laughs> so then she's like, you want this caramel cake? Uh, we got some ice cream. I'll put some ice cream on it for you. No charge. What? Why are you doing this to me? And I'm going to tell you how good she was. I'm lactose intolerant. Oh, I, no. But I told her yes because I wanted the ice cream. And then I had to stop her. I was like, no, no ice cream. Because I was like, it's going to ruin the rest of my work day. <laughs> but that is, they're too skillful. Too skillful with the dessert so uh, But can I just say this? That caramel cake was amazing. That is absolutely awesome. And, <laughs> and they caught me on a Friday. And I do believe in this. Treat yourself. Mm-hmm. You got to treat yourself, especially on Friday, especially on a Friday. So that is my, you know, I would love to hear from any other Kosh listeners out there. A, hey, what's going on with you and desserts? Like, are you, do you get to dessert? Do you say no to desserts? I mean, what what's going on? Am I, am I just weak? Is that what's going on? Darn, what's going on? I think we all are because, you know, you have to be healthy and too much pressure. It's too and much. I don't pressure. think we do treat ourselves enough anymore. No. So. All right. Because you know, Don, I was going to call you out because you know what? The last time we went to lunch, uh, they got us. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they totally got us. <laughs> yeah, I think we both said no. I think we said no twice, and then came back, and then we had one we were sharing. Yeah, we ended up. <laughs> how often do you get the pistachio? I mean, really, in this area, how many times do you get it? I hey, it's my first time that I ever had that particular pistachio dessert, and it was spectacular. But um, they were skillful. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like there's some secret college of dessert selling. Like there's something secret going on that we don't know about. Someone writes it up, and they're just very good with delivery. You think that's what it is? Yeah. Oh, because I think everyone secretly wants dessert. Bruh. Facts. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yep. Secretly, everybody wants dessert. <laughs> They're ready. They're ready for the sell. I love it. All right. Okay. Ready to jump into the next segment. Sure. Uh, next segment is word association. This is where I say a word and you tell me what's on your mind. So first word we always start off with is food. Food. Fun topic. So I like food. Um, I've well, it would be horrible if you uh, didn't. I'm just saying. People don't, and you've had some guests that don't, too. Oh, that's true. I'm not, you're right. You're right. Which still amazes me. Mm. Um, but truthfully, I can get so busy, I forget to eat. So, no. I do get it. Um, which reminds me, something needs to be turned off. I did bring something for you, though. Oh. Because I ended up losing... A lot of weight recently. Okay. It was planned. COVID was not so nice to me. So I brought you two recipes. Ah. These are my favorite dishes right now. I am a person who it's doing something called lean and green. So it focuses more on the protein and less ingredients, um, natural, less processed, um, really low glycemic and low carb. And this is coming from a person who loves pasta. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I never thought that anyone else in my family would eat food with me when I started doing this diet. Um, and the bruschetta chicken is absolutely positively our favorite dish right now. Okay. And then I found a new one. It's a chicken 
with um, Canadian bacon and Parmesan cheese. Oh, it is unbelievable! All right, Kosh sisters, I'm I'm not even kidding. Like she seriously just handed me two recipes: Bruh. Um, bruschetta chicken casserole and cheesy bacon smothered chicken. Um, can I ask you a little bit more? So it you this is was this a this was a food change, a lifestyle change? It was a lifestyle change. So okay, can we can we go into that a little? We can. It's um, a program called Optavia. It's a meal replacement, which is something I never thought I would do. So you're eating bars five times a day, and then you're having one lean and green meal. Okay. Um, But what I found out with my body is because when I do get working, I forget to eat. And I'm not getting my nutrition during the day. My... um, body's not burning off fat anymore it's storing it all oh so when i started doing and some people do this in just small meals every Uh, two to three hours which does the same thing i just grab a protein bar every two to three hours and then i have a great meal at the end of the day it fits my lifestyle i can run with the kids grab a bar and then i also don't snack on all the bad stuff during the day now, occasionally there's still candy in my office because i have a lot of staff members that like candy too so I do cheat a little. <laughs> yeah. You gotta wait, like you gotta treat yourself. You do have to treat yourself. Okay. You said you're a sweet person. I'm a sweet and salty. No, I'm a sweet salty. I'm actually more salty than sweet, but um as age progresses, I'm becoming more sweet. Like I used to actually just not do sweets very much. Um and then I've gone to the sweet salty and now like sweets call my name like at night. I kinda wanna something. Favorite potato chip. Ooh, okay. So those jalapeno chips, uh, the cruncher kind, those those I'm weak for. Uh, quality Doritos, like the uh, the chili, uh, the sweet chili ones. Those are fantastic. Jay's potato chips. Any I, look, shout out to my mama. My mama brought us up on Jay's. So those hot Jay's potato chips. Mm-hmm. Love Jay's. Anything Jay's. Um, yeah, like I am a. I am by far a potato chip connoisseur. <laughs> I am horrible when it comes to potato chips. Munchos. Munchos. I mean, like the worst potato chip you can ever have, <laughs> but it tastes so good. They're good. Yeah. I swear, it's just like bathing them in salt. Okay. All right. Cocktail or beer? Definitely a cocktail. Okay. We got a favorite? Um, Amarillo Sour, but you can catch me with a red Cabernet all the time. Okay. I definitely definitely am into wine. I never could um, get the taste for beer. No? No, I don't like the aftertaste. <sighs> I can drink beer, but it, it just makes me feel full at the end of the day. So I, I like, I'll do it, especially in like going to sporting events and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Like, there's good beers out there. There's good tasty beers out there, but by far, cocktail. All right, and wine. Mm-hmm. Ooh, Cabernet, a really spicy one, full body. And I'm not a wine connoisseur by no means whatsoever, but I want it to have flavor. What makes a wine spicy? Now you've got me like <laughs> intrigued. And that's Bruh. why I say I'm not a wine connoisseur. Mm. <laughs> because I cannot tell you what it is that they put in it with the different taste to make it spicy. But someone will tell me it's something like chocolate and different things like that. But I'll be like, whatever. I like the way it tastes. So Okay. Fantastic. All right, Kosh listeners, we need to need, we need to know this out here because someone out here in Koshland knows the answer. We've got some pretty knowledgeable uh drinkers out here, so share, share. We need to know. What makes the wine spicy? Um streaming. Streaming. Well, I have a eleven and thirteen year old in the house, so there's a lot of Disney Plus in our house. Ooh, what are they watching? Um, oh my gosh. Right now, Ethan's watching any of the new Disney movies that are coming out. So Encanto, um, Star Wars, anything from Marvel comes forward to. Oh yeah. I like the stuff like Cobra Kai though and back to the older days. Okay. I, I, 
you know what? I keep hearing about Cobra Kai. I haven't watched Cobra Kai. I've got Disney. Um, and Kosh listeners, you already know I had my big falling out with uh, Spectrum and ended up with Hulu Live and the Disney slash ESPN package. And I have not watched one thing on Disney since I've signed up for it yet. Oh, goodness. They yeah. have a lot. I just found out the other day that apparently um, because I had the um, parent controls on, I wasn't getting all of my options. Oh, well, it's Disney. How often do you think of movies that are over 14? Uh, this is true. And I'm like, wait, because it, it was upgrading. So it asked me if I wanted to change the controls. I'm like, wait, I don't have the full access right now? Okay. <laughs> now you've got me curious. What I mean, what's what's 14 plus on Disney? Seriously. I don't know. I haven't had a chance to look into it yet to see what is all new that I haven't recognized before. But I'm, I'm sort of there with you. It's like, what does Disney do that's, you know, 14 and older? Okay. They do yep. a pretty good job of staying 14 or under. So, And what are you watching right now? Well, I just finished all of, well, this uh, this was Prime Video, actually. Um, I've just finished all of Suits. Oh. I binged on Suits and I binged on West Wing. West Wing. Now that's good stuff. Do you know how long that took? I mean, that's back to the day where you had a full season of hour long so i don't even know how many episodes i watched but i think it took close to a month to get all the way through it oh that's that okay yeah that's a long time i was gonna say it was a long time even i'm like how many seasons did they go for you know what if i can't binge it in a weekend yeah that was not a weekend one no but you know what I do like about the streaming option is when you do go back and watch things and if you get to watch it without commercials, it does change the the whole feeling of what it feels to watch a show, right? Because it, it goes through so that our show becomes 42 minutes or something. Like you can't believe that about a quarter of the show is commercials. Yeah, exactly. So I'm at that point. Um, okay. Shop local. Right now, for the Fox Cities area, that would definitely be Meat Street Bistro. I sort of think they're a hidden gem in a way. Um, they have the best appetizers. Um, portobello mushrooms with an amazing sauce. We've been spending a lot of time with our board of directors over there. They have a back room that they've been um, giving us space. What's the name of that? Mead Street Bistro. Mead Street. Mead. M-E-A-D-E. Okay. Mead Street Bistro. So it's at the corner of Mead and Northline. There's a little strip mall that it's in. Okay. So and, and we'll fabulous. to your work. Fabulous, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, I'm always looking for a new place. What's your favorite place right now? Um, I've got uh, the two that I'm going to go with for for work uh, in Appleton. Um the jerk joint because their food is just uh. insane like the flavors the smokiness mm-hmm. and what they do um like it's just hands down like so good and then arthur's arthur's is like my other weak spot uh on main street mm-hmm. it's the it's a mix between the the food itself because i've become an empanada fiend something about (laughs) and they change their empanada selection like uh daily or every other day um but it's also the setting of that location Mm -hmm. it's just a really nice feel to it so a lot of energy there we tried to go there for my birthday because when we met that was the first time i had ever been there oh that was the first Mm -hmm. time okay and i love them now (laughs) but they were closed on my birthday uh monday they were closed on a monday uh tuesday Oh, okay. They, I think they're closed Monday. Well, are they closed Monday and Tuesday? Maybe. You I know, the whole... Go during lunch now. That whole Monday being closed thing is a thing. Oh, and they do close early. Like they, they do. Yeah, they don't do dinner, if I'm correct. So they close at like two or three. Oh, wow. Um. So that's the other thing I've learned about them. Um, they have an amazing breakfast. So if you can ever get over there and do like their breakfast mm-hmm. brunch... Uh, on a Saturday morning, oh, <laughs> that's good. That's good stuff. Well, they're good people too. Oh, fantastic very friendly, people! Very attentive. So, yeah, 
Um, I just give it up to Appleton downtown. Like they're, they're pretty good. Okay. Yep. That's, that's my spot. And if you haven't gone to the jerk joint yet, I'll make sure I get there. Oh, so yeah. where's your favorite spot here in Oshkosh? Then? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm transitioning right now. So right now, um, I'm loving fish fries over at Jensen's, which okay. is the supper club. That's like a couple of blocks over. Um, and they just have a great crew. Um, Ruby owl on main street. Okay. Uh, they have these avocado fries. Really? And whatever they're breaded with is magic <laughs> because they, they take the, it because the avocado is firm in there, but mm-hmm. not like hard, right. but the breading is this really good, firm, gritty fry. And it's just this crunch. It's just this crunch and the sauce. First of all, anytime you have anything sauce. like that, their sauce is fire. So that that's another establishment. So those have probably been the two places uh, lately we've been eating out the most. Did a lot of places close down during COVID? That's one thing I was wondering without being in the area anymore is how many of our downtown here are still um, there. I think there's places that might still be transitioning and and so there's been a transition where some things closed and then there's new things opening. Okay. Um, once again, Kosh listeners know uh, my church, which was Cranky Pat's closed. And that was, you know, loved Cranky Pat's, their pizza, their wings. That was my family, uh, my bar family. And uh, yeah, so that was a hard hit. I'm trying to think of some of the other places that might have closed or that I know closed during that time. But th- there was definitely several establishments um, that closed down. And then since then, there's just been new things popping up, it feels like. But not necessarily all eateries, except for over there by where they built the new Oshkosh Corp mm-hmm. building, which is coming in off of 21. Okay. Um, there, There's a whole new district that has been built over there. And nice. so like Popeye's chicken is finna come. There's a Dunkin' Donuts over there. Like there's all sorts of stuff. So you should check that out. Absolutely. We don't get back as much. Whatever which is you d- really sad because it was nice when we were here. Whatever you do, don't drive through campus though, because right now campus right now, no, no, no. I mean, I'm not ever like, I'm all about going through UWO, but right now they've got a, they've got a full dose of construction. Like don't they in the summer? Though. Oh no, no, <laughs> this is different. Like they've literally got it tore down. It is hard to oh, maneuver. Goodness. Yeah, like Algoma is down. Ooh, I've always found it hard because a lot of the students on campus just like to walk out in the middle of the street. They don't want to look at the cars that are coming. That's all students. That's how they operate. Yeah, hey, it's you know, about them at that age. So I'm just saying, you know, Bruh. and Appleton, that's Lawrence. Yes, it is. Lawrence kids will get hit, though. <laughs> They've got to learn, no. you would think. Bruh. <laughs> think uh, learn. Nah, they were, I mean, at least they've got good flashing lights and stuff. And I remember when they didn't have them there. And hence why we have them now. Yeah, exactly. Yes, but you are right. Uh, students look. When you're a student, and I'm sure you were there, there's a lot on your mind. You're thinking about all sorts of things. You got things to do. Yes, the uh, staring down at phones isn't helping anything, but, uh, you know, that your mind's busy. You got homework assignments. Where are your friends? And then you've got this super powerful uh, technology device in your hand, and it forces you to look down all the time, so... And I think that's the problem sometimes. <laughs> we become disconnected. <laughs> While being connected? That's what they say. Uh, I'm just saying, you know, hey. Okay. Um, diversity. Diversity. Diversity in what way? I know one of my things right now is there's not a lot of diversity of thought. I'm a person who very much believes in protesting. Um, It's all right. But I also haven't seen a lot of people willing to sit down and to listen to someone who has thoughts that are different from them and have a conversation. It seems like we're getting too polarized now. Bruh. 
expand? Um, if you take any topic that's in the media right now, you have your left and your right. I think the majority of us are somewhere in the middle. I agree. But I don't see people having those discussions where you can learn from each other anymore. In the middle. Yeah. And that's because the discussion points don't start at the points where there's likely the most um, opportunity to agree. They start at the points where there is the biggest disagreement. Exactly. And a lot of the stuff, and <laughs> this is a running theme right now in episodes. So we've talked about this for a couple episodes. Um, it's all based on belief or a lot of it's based on belief and not, you know, I'm not look you, it's America, believe what you want to believe, but, uh, I need some logic in my belief, you know, depending on, on how that road goes. So I'm with you, you know, it's frustrating sometimes when you see that, because I do believe that beliefs can change too. But if you're not willing to have a discussion, how can that happen? See, and I'm I'm the opposite. I I'm actually belief. I don't believe beliefs change because they're beliefs, and and you're going to put a lot of effort into finding supporting whatever uh, facts, documents, uh, arguments, people, speakers, whatever mm-hmm. to enhance your point and your belief more so than find something to expand your mind and and open your eyes to to question your belief give me an example of something that you don't think could be changed versus something that if you knew more about it or had more information you might be open to religion okay that's a good point (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> talk religion huh no that is but truthfully look at where you are and what you believe um from a child to adulthood too your religion does change and your belief in faith changes uh um, grows as you grow that can be and, and i will agree with that i i do think there's a lot of change um it may be from when if you if you're a person that where your parents um had you going and participating in in religion from an early age and when you grow up, you may feel differently. Yes, I could see that. But I guess my argument to that would be not even an argument. Um, My point to that would be is like, those are your formative years. So you're still figuring things Mm -hmm. out. Um, More adult. Does you, does that change later? Um, And, you know, I'm not a religious person personally, um, but very spiritual and ethical um, are the places that I like to believe. Um, and I, I support people who do religion 100%. Um, my problem with religion is for those who hold it into a place of it being 100% factual, but at the end of the day, it's man-made mm-hmm. and man is flawed and anything made by man is flawed. And that means Religion's flawed. All of them. My husband and I always have discussions um, about religion and faith. Oh. Well, because <laughs> they are different. They're completely different. They are different. Um, hey, well, let's dig in a little. Oh, I'm right, yeah. oh, how about just a smidge? Just a smidge. Just a smidge. Um, well, I'll tell you our topic. Okay. Because um, we have a child who um, is turning 13 next month. Um. So I was born and raised Missouri Synod Lutheran. Every Wednesday night, every Sunday, we were literally half a block from our church. Okay. Um, time for my child to go through and get confirmed. Very analytical young man. So he wanted to know more about confirmation. What is it? Okay, we're going to share the materials with you and tell you more about, Mom, I don't believe this. Wow. Yes. Really? Exactly. It's like, are you open to learning about it? Mom, I don't believe this. 
So we had a question of what to do. Um, I don't want him to grow up and not understand that there's something bigger than him. Right. It doesn't matter if you believe that's your God, if you believe, um, I don't even have the right term for it. Man is not top. Whatever it may be. Something else created and started everything. Yeah. Oh, no, I, I, yeah, I'm with you. I don't know how to put that into words. I really don't. Yeah. Um, I think we're too, we want to confine things too much and categorize things too much, and I don't think you can do that with us. Um, so we came up with a compromise of trying a different church for him so that he could explore questions. Ooh, I like that. But he wouldn't be forced to do something he didn't believe in. So. I celebrate that. Well, thank you. Because that's hard. hard. <laughs> it's really hard. It is. Um, um, and how he feels now at this age is that how he's going to feel in his 20s or 40s or 50s. Right. How is he going to look at it? He's figuring it out. Yeah. I applaud you allowing him to figure it out because that's not often the case, right? Yeah, that's not often shared that way either from others. So, right. So um, we do question it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's, oh my God, that's powerful and that's so good. Um, yeah. I, religion is, is that one topic, right? And so, like, uh, my whole thing is, is um, I do believe in a greater being because. Um, things make too much sense, right? Somebody had to engineer the things. Mm -hmm. Like for every one thing, there's something to counter it. Like for it, just the way nature works, like uh, there's this thing to feed off this thing, but if there's too many of this thing, then this thing comes along and brings down that. Yeah. This animal here controls the population of this animal over here. This plant here feeds this thing over here and it's too well engineered mm -hmm. for something to have not engineered it to me that's the logic that i put into it um my question comes where people try to tell you what your relationship should be with whatever that is no, it's going to be different for everyone. Yes. It absolutely is. Um, and that's what I think is special about faith. Right. Um, there can be so many different aspects to it. To me, the religion's the gobbledygook. It's like, take that part out, take all the dogma out. Yes. What is that actual faith? What is that belief? And I think all everyone all around the world have bits and pieces of it. I think we need to be open to the larger understanding. Well, you know what? When you talk to people who study it and academics who study it, I often hear it's all more similar than not. Exactly. Like it's fundamentally kind of like whatever the fundamentals are, they're kind of built the same. And there's a lot of the same characters that cross over into – the narratives that are shared. Um, and so, like, there's something there, right? I think it's interesting because um, I originally went to school for education and ended up coming out with a history degree. <laughs> 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 I'll absolutely love that. Um, I have the degree because it's helped me so well. But when you do dive into it and you can see the similarities from different parts and how they all feed together – and they verify different events and things that happen, then you're like, okay, there might be something here. Right. But you also have to get past all the gobbledygook. The gobbledygook. Do, do your own research. Look at source documentation. So. And my takeaway from this is the term gobbledygook. <laughs> I... <laughs> Okay, just admit it. Okay, That's, I'll give you bull pucky too. No, I have no. A whole bunch of them. Wait, bull pucky. Okay, these are good. Sometimes you want to swear and you 
can't swear. <laughs> So you have to come up with different words. I don't know about that. To me, just going to swear. I mean, these things that, hey, look, I don't know anybody that, like, people just know what swearing is. It is not horrible. They're just really good nouns and adjectives <laughs> placed when needed <laughs> to express. Yeah, the, to properly express what you're trying to get across in a way that other words may not fit as well. <laughs> Bruh. I just say <laughs> Uh, I mean, let's be honest. Some of these swear words, I mean, they they are the only words that I think in our in our vernacular that fit in every capacity. They can be a noun, a verb, an adjective. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, as my thirteen year old uses them way too often. Oh, uh, yeah, couple yeah. more years, huh? Not now. That, yep. Uh, let's hold off. You got a little bit of time. All right, I love it. Well, that was a different diversity dive. That was really good. That was really good. Um, community. Oh, community. We have the best community here. Um, the Fox Cities is like no other community in Wisconsin. People care about each other. And even if I look at it from a nonprofit perspective, it's about working together and not against each other. I mean, I've been some other places and people are so afraid of their territories that they won't talk to each other and help each other out. Really? Yeah, uh, really. Okay. Here you have funders that basically force it. Um, they don't want duplication. They understand that when you're working together, you can accomplish more. So there is a big picture like thing that happens in this region. And I'm always amazed how the there's like a quiet think tank mm -hmm. that's moving um, community efforts along and um, like it's organized it's it's not just happening. I mean, there's um, there's a lot of organic things that happen, but there definitely is um, some greater greater good, greater mind um, individuals putting their money where their mouth is to look out for the greater region and yes. what they're hoping it will be in the long term in the future. I don't think you see that a lot in the other communities throughout Wisconsin. Or at least maybe when I was there, I wasn't um, old enough or experienced enough to notice if it was going on. Yeah, I'm I'm just going to say I've only, in for Wisconsin, I've been two places that I've lived, uh, Milwaukee and here, and uh, I was too young in Milwaukee to know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was wiling out. So <laughs> That's a very fair statement. Yeah, I, I was not, I couldn't tell you, but I... Now that I'm in the place in life where I am now, I do pay very close attention to what's happening in our region. And um, I mean, I'm not saying it's perfect because it's not. Mm -hmm. um, and we have our challenges, but um, there's a lot of good work that gets done here. And I'm always amazed at the resources that exist here because I do think it's not necessarily duplicated in a lot of other communities across Wisconsin, per se. When you think about the size of our community, too. We're not a huge metropolitan area. Well, it, think about what we have, though. I, it, no, it's not huge. But, I mean, it kind of depends on how you look at it. Because there's one thing, like, there's all of these, you know, we've got these separate cities. But, I mean, in, the, in reality, you could just paint the Fox Cities as kind of one big urban metro area. Yeah. You know, in one way. Especially, you know, because, you know... We've had this conversation. We <laughs> we act real funny around here uh, when it's like, oh, uh, you work in Appleton? Oh, the commute. Ugh. Like, <laughs> what, that 20 minutes? <laughs> it's the winter driving. That's what it is. It's the winter driving. Is that what it is? I think so. I, okay. I'll, I'll give you that because I'm not going to lie. I hate winter driving. Um, okay, let's just be honest. Uh, cash listeners that know me know that I just hate driving. Really? Oh my God! If you really know Timber, Timber don't drive. drive. Yeah, not if I can help it. And don't let there be a choice of two people. 
So that means, Don, you are forewarned. If we ever have to go to a conference or something like that, um, mm-hmm. you're going to be driving. I'm just going <laughs> to tell you right now. And there's there's a ton of people out there that know this is true. If there's two people in a car, Timber's likely not going to be the one driving. I don't mind that as long as I know where I'm going. Oh, guess what I do well? Punch coordinates into cell phones. Like I'm an expert. <laughs> Get you the fastest place you need to go. Hey, look. Not necessarily the right place. Oh, facts. I've screwed it up. One of my staff members was going out on a home visit, and it took her out on a gravel road that then stopped, and she was in a field. Ooh. She was able to get back to where she needed to be, um, but yeah, sometimes I think we trust just a little too much. Uh, maybe, but I'm not going to lie. Um, I I mean, I was alive before GPS, and I'm kind of one of those people now that I'm not quite sure how anybody got anywhere. <laughs> I mean, I know it because, look, my dad was a truck driver, and my dad could tell you, you drive this route to this route, turn left on this street, like, and he knew it, like, off the top of his mm-hmm. head. Like, you could still talk to him, and he'll tell you where you need to go. And then, and if I'm like, oh, I went here, oh, yeah, that's off a of highway, blah, blah, blah. And, like, like the knowledge, the wisdom, the ability in that. Uh, I feel like our generation now we're like it's the generation that lost telephone numbers don't nobody remember telephone numbers no more Bruh. no one knows them anymore because everybody just goes into their phone and presses this person or ask google to call this person right so i mean that's it right yep. and so i think going places isn't much different than that now because we don't know do you know <laughs> I know some, <laughs> but I was also really good at knowing what my speed dial was, too, back in the day, too. Oh, okay. And remembering, so, but if you get me beyond 10, no. <laughs> Are you talking about the 10 people in the speed dial? <laughs> okay, I just wanted to clarify. As old as I am. Uh, you know exactly what I'm talking I know, about. And look, I knew what you were referencing. I just wanted to be sure. <laughs> you remember when call waiting came into play? Oh, Oh, did you bring up call I waiting? Did. Oh. You brought up VCRs the other week. Hey, look, VCR. <laughs> Cause you know what? These look these these youthful listeners need to understand that the struggle was real. <laughs> Bruh. The struggle was real. Fighting with your parents because you wanted a phone. So you could have a conversation. Oh no, we're not talking about a cell phone either. We're talking about <laughs> your own phone in your room that had a cord. But you had to keep the line open so people could call the house. That's right. And call waiting and the and you could get punished if you didn't tell your mom that somebody called on the line. Like that was trouble. My parents were so vehemently against getting call waiting. It was horrible. Oh look, I my I parents like, why? my mom wasn't against it, but I do question whether she would tell me when fall when calls came in. <laughs> Bruh. I'm just saying. You know, we weren't the top, so yeah. Absolutely. And um uh, Shout out to VCRs. I mean, let's be honest. They they changed the game. It was mm-hmm. nice to be able to record something and watch it later. Like that really that that's that was the original on demand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, my kids don't even realize when they say don't turn that dial what it means. They have never lived without a remote control. Bruh. They've never lived with the um, little tinfoil ears that you'd have to move around so you could get reception on your old TV. You know what? Here's the funny thing that I have found with TVs. If you, I don't even know if they put buttons on them anymore. Underneath you can still get some buttons. Sometimes. Some of them. Some, but not all of them. No, exactly. Right? They're supposed to be like somewhere on the TV, but I swear that I've had TVs in recent times that I never found the, where the button was. There was like an on button and that was it. I couldn't find like a volume button and stuff. So if you lose the remote, you're screwed. What do you do with that? <laughs> I don't know. All right. What's my kid? Look for it. You'll find it. Oh. My kids you, lose it all the time. You know the world shuts down without a remote. Like the whole house is in turmoil. That's an argument in the house. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Um, Fox City's Hidden Gems. Bergstrom Waller Museum. 
So I challenge you to find Bergstrom Waller and go on a visit. So if you want to know anything about local glass artists, um, you want to see some really amazing paperweights, this is a place you just need to visit. They have an amazing museum that um, I hardly ever have time to stop and look in. I just have fun in their gift shop going in Mm. and taking a look. Um, Bergstrom. Bergson Roller has been around for ages, and I think it took me until my 40s to go visit them, and I was wondering why I never did before. They're in Nina, um, down by their park, is it Riverside Park. They're just tucked away, but they are just amazing. Yeah. And they have some amazing people that work there, too. Okay. I Look, this is the first I'm hearing of it, so this sounds like a field trip that might have to happen. Okay, gosh, listeners, you have to let Timber know um, about the Berkshire Mall Museum. Okay. And then he needs to go see it. All right, I challenge y'all, gosh, listeners, um, send, me, send me an email, send me something, send me a voicemail. Tell me, tell me what I need to know so I'm not going in blind. But people will know about the name, but I think a lot of people, especially that grew up in the area, haven't made the trip out. Oh. And it's not far. It's right here. It's easy, and they have some amazing things. Is it like a good family outing? When they have their events going on, absolutely. Um, I can go shopping there anytime, personally. Uh, We like to give our board members um, who are retiring paperweights when they leave. Um, Because it's unique. It's something special in our area. Um, And they work with artists from all over the place. And they'll do different demonstrations throughout the year, too. So it's really cool. In fact, we're coming up on summertime. So I would recommend going to their website to see what they have going on. Okay. Um, what's the Fox City's need? I think we have a lot of things here. So I always think that's a hard question to answer. It, yeah, well, maybe. It depends. Uh, well, it's all, everything is, is from each uh, an individual's lens. So for you, what do you think? If I'm going on food, I need another fish fry place. Did you really just say that? I did. Another fish another fry place? One, yeah. Bruh. <laughs> I want something reminiscent of the VFW days. Oh. Um, I haven't gotten my comparison yet. Some good potato pancakes. Okay. Always can have another fish fry place. Always another fish fry place. But, I mean, if I think about our community, I love the fact that um, we have the PAC here. My goodness. If you think about the concerts that you can go to this summer. Oh, yeah. Down at the amphitheater or down in the park. I mean, we just have opportunities all over the place. Yes, we do. Okay. That's fair. So So what do you think we still need? um, I... And I've said this on on multiple episodes, but I always go back to we need more things for our youth. Um, There's not enough for our youth to do, to me, um, personally. um, And I'm I'm talking about that Mm -hmm. teenage age. Like, that whole mall thing isn't what it used to be, and I don't even know if that's the greatest thing to do, but it's just things to do, whatever that means or whatever that looks like, um, to get to encourage them to get out the house, to not look at the screen, all of those things, you know, I'm, I'm very pro tech. So I, I love technology and I'll be the first to say I put technology in my daughter's hands very early, but she also was a soccer player. She was out doing her thing. She kicked it in the neighborhood with her friends and rode bikes and scooters and all the good stuff. And, but I do always feel like there could have been an opportunity for more, for something Mm -hmm. like, and I appreciate things like, um, you know, I know we've got these, like, um, she used to go to like the gymnastics place and we've got these bouncy, I don't even know what it trampoline parks and stuff Mm -hmm. like that. But I do just think like, those are all destination locations and they're very few. Yeah. So there could be a few more. And even having the kids be able to get there on their own. That would be fabulous. I mean, we used to ride the bus all the time growing up. And we'd be able to go somewhere. We'd be able to go to the mall, the library. I think the only, re- 
reason we went to the library, and I apologize to anyone who teaches in the Appleton area, but it's for the candy store that was on the corner right across from it. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, huh? Yeah, it was before Cheyenne's. Um, what was it? Was it Fubalt's? Something like that? Oh, gosh, that was a long time ago. Best candy store. Yeah? Yep. I love a and good candy store. candy like this. You know what? Maybe that's what's needed. I think that is what's needed. Maybe we maybe we need more candy, candy stores. stores. Like, there's no wrong in that. I don't think so. Oh, all right. More dessert stores. No. <laughs> <laughs> we don't. have lots of dessert stores. Yeah, don't hire those servers. Cupcakes, no, they're gangster. <laughs> um, okay. On to the next segment, um, the Naughty Slash Heroes Corner. This is your opportunity to nominate somebody to the Naughty or the Heroes Corner. It's not necessarily a person. It could be anything, a thing, uh, an organization, whatever you want. I'm going to go with a person. I'm going to go with uh, Lindsay Hines. She is a teacher in the Kimberly School District um, for their gifted and talented students between 5th and 8th grade. Um when I think about influential teachers, especially um, for Connor, uh, because of him being so analytical, he just thinks of things differently. And sometimes that means he doesn't necessarily fit in with everyone. Um, but Mrs. Hines got him and is really works with him so that he's able to flourish and succeed in school versus struggling in school. That's awesome. Oh. Yeah. yeah, she's our hero. I'm all about celebrating educators whenever possible. Um, I don't think enough of our educators get their flowers I um, agree. in real time. And the one thing I've learned uh, working in some educational spaces is um, sometimes the greatest work you do, you never get to see the finished project and don't hear from it. And then you don't know. And the next thing you know, you run into them somewhere and, They've got a family and children, and you're like, oh, my God. And they're like, oh, I remember you, and this is what you said to me. I've had literally people say things to me like, you said this to me, and I can't believe anything I've ever said stuck with someone. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. I just think Connor in particular can be challenging. Um, he, does, he has a lot of rigidity with his thought. So he will tell you when he thinks you're wrong. Ooh. Oh, Yeah. Not nice when he's telling teachers this. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. As a that, mom, you don't like getting that call. No, that that sounds like a challenge. But you know, is it the worst? It's not. But to have teachers be able to see beyond that and right. how they can help him grow and learn from that, it would take a special teacher because they don't necessarily have time to manage the the challenge. You got it. So that, that would be my thing, and I get that, because there's a lot going on. Okay. All right. Um, you know what? I believe we are at that time. We are at the that good, good time. So... Okay, once again, I'm smiling as always, and that sound means that it is time for the topic of the week. The topic of the week is always chosen by our guest, and this week's topic of the week, Dawn, is... Casa of the Fox Cities. Okay. What is Casa of the Fox Cities? Well, Casa of the Fox Cities is a nonprofit organization that works with community volunteers in our court system so that... Children and youth can achieve placement in safe and permanent homes as quickly as possible. Um, the reason I wanted to talk about this is, in a way, we're sort of a hidden gem. So let me tell you, back up and tell you a little bit about us first. Um, we serve kids between the age of 0 and 18 once they come into the child welfare system because of abuse and neglect. Um, so... There's a court order, or I guess you can call it a CHIPS order, Children in Need of Protection and Services. A uh, judge will make a decision about whether a CASA is needed. 
And when a CASA gets appointed, what happens is we have volunteers that will go out and they'll learn about the child. They'll learn about their family, everything that's going on in their life. Uh, they meet with them on a regular basis, um, no less than once a month, but usually about once a week. Then they end up identifying needs that the child may have. Uh, what kind of needs? So it could be educational needs. It could be simply visitation with family members. Um, there's a lot of people that are involved in the court system. And everyone has a different lens and a different role. So your guardian met items, which we're very fortunate in the state of Wisconsin to have guardian met items. There are some states that don't have them. But they are your attorneys that focus on the best interest of the child. The only problem is when it comes to our court system, there are so many kids involved that our guardian ad litems can have 200 to 300 children under Bruh. their care. Did you say 200 to 300? Yep. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Who can manage that and take care of it? Not effectively. No. And we have some really good guardian ad litems. But, you know, the average, too, when you go back to court, it's every six months. So you might see a child every six months. And, like I said, we have some really good guardian ad litems, and they want to see their uh, kiddos more than that. They just can't manage it. They're doing private practice at the same time, too. So right. um, we help identify the needs of the child at the time, um, especially when children are suffering from trauma, the behaviors that result aren't necessarily the best for school. Uh, a lot of times our volunteers will make sure our kiddos have um, IEPs or our behavioral intervention plans to make sure that we can make sure they're not getting suspended and getting kicked out of school, that we're actually dealing with the behavior. I hate to say that word. Yeah. Um, because there's there's a reason for the behavior. That's I you're, say it. And I'm like I, I cringe when I say it. Well, you're you're trying to create understanding of the behavior. Yes. Uh, because when our children have stability in their life, they're not being moved from placement to placement. They really do thrive. Um, a lot of times, it's just getting the proper resources for the family so that they can be their best. Mm. Uh, fortunately, though, for the kiddo, it can be a struggle for them. They don't know what's going on. Half the time, adults don't understand the court system. <laughs> Facts. Yeah, and then having a child to try and understand that. Um, I always tell people to think about... To feel the same way or even to have an idea of what a child feels like when they're removed from their home, um, you have a child. Yes. A young adult now. Yeah. <laughs> so did you have plans for what would happen if you and your wife all of a sudden died? Yes, actually. Yeah. Okay, so who would their primary caregiver be? Um, it would have been um, her favorite aunt. Okay. Does the favorite aunt live in the same city? Yes. Okay. Close enough, same school district? Yes. Perfect. Most times when kills are removed. Ooh, let, me, let me rephrase that. Now that I think about it, no, she doesn't actually live in the same city. <laughs> oh. There was an assumption there because I'm, I'm, I'm blending the Fox cities together. So if a child's removed from the home and they're placed with a foster parent, now, most of the time, um, Child Protective Services will do their best to keep them in the same school district to maintain some type of stability. Sometimes they can't do it. So you have a child that's not only leaving their family, they're staying with someone they've never met before in a different community, going to a different school, <sighs> different routines, even putting a child down for bed in the evening, not the same. Anything that you knew that was y your stability, even in an unstable environment, you still have what is normal for you. 
is gone. So I try and remind people of this because I think about my own kids. They would be going with my brother. They'd be in a different community. They would have siblings that are in the same household. They have a whole bunch of things that they have to worry about that's different. And then there's everything that's happening with their parents at the same time. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, you're right. That's a lot. It's a lot. Adults can't understand some of this. And if we can't do it, how can we expect a child to do it? All right. So you're navigating like all of these changes to your personal life while you're navigating like the court systems being thrown at you. Exactly. And God knows I look, I've met very few people, adults who navigate the court system. Well, no matter what it is, this, uh, uh, even the simplicity of a traffic ticket. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we're fortunate. We do have some really good judges too. Um, most of our children will not be in court unless they request to be there. And then usually you're talking 12 years old or older. Um, but it's very traumatic. And sometimes you're hearing stuff in court that you don't want to hear. Mm. If cases aren't going well or for a child, you want things to move faster so you can be home with your family. So our advocates go in so that they can make sure that the child's wishes are presented to the court. They gather a whole bunch of information about how they're doing, what's going on, what they need. And then they provide that to the GAL, the assistant district attorney, the judge, the parents. How big is the organization? How many of these advocates do you have? Oh, we probably have somewhere between 130 and 140 advocates right now. And that was at the end of last year serving about 240 kids. Mm. Um, Only about half of the kids are in the system right now. And that's for out of gaming alone. Um, If we look at our surrounding communities and Winnebago in particular, there's probably just as many uh, children and youth in the system. Um, I would love to see us expand into Winnebago. I know that my board of directors is also open to that too. Our biggest thing is what is the right time to do the expansion to make sure that we can do it right because we want to make sure that we're a sustainable organization. Right. We don't want to come into a community and then have to leave because we are not sustainable. All right, Kosh listeners, you heard it. Um, you heard it. We, our youth need this too. Yes, they do. They absolutely do. Our youth deserve this too. And I mean, there are, uh, there are a lot of good people within the court system. Um, I can't say that enough, but it's a huge system and we can help each other by having safeguards like CASAs there to help bring together because we believe in collaborating. Um, And truthfully, sometimes we don't agree with the other parties. So CASAs come in and they, they look at what's in front of them so that they can use Evidence-based observations, okay? So what that means is when we write a report, we don't say we think the child was happy or we think they're bonded with their parents. What did that look like to you? Oh. So the child came into the living room and gave their caregiver a smile brought over a piece of paper to show their drawing. It's what does that look like? Because when you write that you think they were happy, you're writing your own opinion in your own lens. That's not what the court needs to know. Right. They want to know what actually happened. They want evidence. Mm -hmm. And it's more objective because everyone has their own biases. Absolutely. That's not what a child needs. Um, What? What does your typical, if there is such a thing, um, CASA advocate look like? Or what are they, I mean, you know, do you understand? I'm, I'm asking, like, is there a certain profession you get a lot from? Or 
and age category. I was going to say, I'm trying to think of some of my stats right now. And yeah. like, you know, what um, is, employment wise, no, our advocates are all over the place. Um, and particular, not from the child welfare system. Okay. Um, age, you have to be 21 to be an advocate. Uh, but we definitely have a lot of older advocates that would be in the retired realm right now. I think our biggest age group is between like 40 and 60 right now. And I'm saying this thick, I think, because I like to be exact when I say that stat, but it's been a couple of months since I've looked at it. Um, The biggest thing to know is if you care about children and you have a couple hours a week that you could spend with a child, that's what they need. We're not going in to save children. That's not our role. And they don't need saving. They absolutely do not need saving. Uh, they need someone who's going to know who they are and let the court know what they need. Mm. That's powerful. And sometimes, I, I like the lippy kids. I'll just be honest. I really do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like the kids um, who push back because I know they're not, um, even if it's inappropriate, I know they're not keeping it in. All so right. I do like that. Uh, they're sharing. They are sharing. But the most important thing is that they're able to do that so that they feel they're being hurt. Um, and then sometimes you'll get the fun ones. I want to say that a child told us the other week they wanted to go to Hawaii for their wish. I'm like, I like that. I want to go to Hawaii too. Me too. Maybe the judge can make that happen for us. <laughs> um, is I'm curious about um, gender breakdown. Oh, good question. Thank you. You know, because I think that's important. Um, Because when I think representation, I think all representation. And I just think that's super important. And gender, to me, is super important. And and I'm not going to lie. Listening to this just gives me this inkling, like, that there is a heavy um, female, um, uh, like, there's a lot of female advocates. You are absolutely correct. Thank you. We suck when it comes to gender equality. We really do. Um, So it's probably like a 60-40 split uh, between male and female when it comes to clients served. When it comes to volunteer advocates, maybe 10% are male. Mm. And that also doesn't adjust, um, address the LGBTQIA community either. Um, there's an overrepresentation in the court system. And in Wisconsin in particular, recently I've heard about 20 to 30% of kiddos. Um, we are not matching up for our advocates as well. So the advocates aren't matching the, 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 the children. I think that's important, though. I think it is because we want to have those who are like us and understand us. How can you communicate a voice if you don't understand it? Right. So, recruitment. I really need. <laughs> if I can tell your listeners. Oh no no no! I hey, look, this volunteers. is tell them. Tell them right now. Go on. Hey, go on. Tell them, Kosh listeners, that's a, this is the ask. But. I need volunteer advocates. Um, you need to go to www.casafc.org, casafc.org. Just Google Casa of the Fox Cities. You'll get our webpage. All the links are right there. Our phone number our email addresses, and you can get in contact with us right away. We also have a Facebook. Go to our Facebook. 
Uh, right now, we are recruiting for our next class that will be starting for summer. Um, I have waiting, 51 kids on the waiting list right now. 51? 51. Mm. So that means I need more volunteers. You need more volunteers. And you know what? Let me let me just put it out here. These Kosh listeners are amazing people. So, yes. I think that maybe you might be able to squeak a volunteer or two out of this uh, this episode. And the interesting thing, too, is when you think about volunteering and volunteering in your community, our kiddos are placed wherever is best for the child. So that might be in a foster home. It might be living with their parents. Um, it might be living with relatives in nearby community. I want to say the last time I looked, I'm trying to remember again. I'm going to get it wrong. I know how many counties. I'm not even going to say it. We're in more counties than Outagamie. Okay. Um, we definitely have kiddos who are in Winnebago County, Brown County. Um, we have kiddos down in Milwaukee in northern Wisconsin. So no matter where you are, we probably have uh, children who you could volunteer with. If um, if someone's listening and they want to volunteer, what does that look like? Uh, so they reach out. What happens? They reach out to us, and what we do is we sign them up for an informational session, and then we'll go through some of the specifics that you need to know before you become an advocate. And if you still think it's the right thing for you, then we'll end up training you. Um, it's a 30-hour pre-service training, and then you're sworn in by uh, the judge. There is comprehensive background checks. Uh, all your typical youth-serving organizations do the background checks, and then we run a right. FBI check as well. Okay. We do fingerprinting. So probably about a month and a half afterwards, then you're about ready to go. And what does it look like then? So you will be signed a volunteer advocate coordinator. They are your best friend at CASA. They're wonderful resources. I have great staff. And what they're going to do is they're going to help you navigate the child welfare system. There's a lot to learn. So we make sure that every single volunteer who comes in has a professional that they can go to. Um, they're going to take you out on your first visit with a youth. Um, CASAs are known for bringing their bag of toys, especially for the younger kiddos. And you'll end up playing games with the kiddos that you're assigned to. Um, one of the reasons we play games is because we can learn a lot about child, and it's a non-threatening way uh, to start conversations. But you've played Candyland before? Oh, yeah, I'm wicked with it. All right. Yeah. So you can find out if child knows their colors, how high they can count. We look for all these developmental um, growth standards um, through a simple game with kids. Um, sometimes you read with them. Sometimes you're outside playing whatever they want to play. I believe one of our advocates um, <laughs> was out at the park and was in some type of elaborate um, spy and espionage game with the kiddos <laughs> that he was with the last <laughs> time. <laughs> and I'm like, I absolutely love it. Okay. You're with kids being kids and... Then you're gathering all that information, how everyone's doing it. You're giving to the court so they can make their best decisions. It really is making sure that they know what's happening when they need to decide about placement so that we don't have kids lingering in care. Okay. Well, Dawn, I'm going to make sure that I, um, in the podcast notes, we will have the link. Thank you. To CASA. Um, and... Yeah, once again, listeners, you know, um, I can't think of anything. You know, I constantly, I talk to a lot of people. I have a lot of good conversations. And then in my conversations, there's often a lot of people who are like, I want to get involved. I've got an opportunity to get involved. Or, you know, I'm in that age category where people are like, oh, well, you know, I'm I'm, I'm ready to get involved. I, I, I want to figure out how to help my community and stuff. And I, I can't think of a better way than to help our youth. Because that's our future. Yeah. And that's powerful. Um, any last words you would like to add in about CASA uh, of the Fox Cities? CASA of the Fox Cities is a wonderful organization. Um, 
We have wonderful volunteers that join us. My board of directors is amazing. My staff is amazing. We're a growing organization, and we definitely would like people to join us and join our team so that we can serve more kiddos. Mm. Thank you, Don. Well, thanks for asking, Timber. I appreciate it. Hey, no, this is important stuff. And, um, you know, kids are super important to me and um, to most of us. You know, I just think I often think we just don't even know where to get started on how to help. Um, so given given direction and ways to and specific, you know, mm-hmm. I think that helps so much. And um you know, I'm, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that someone, there's some people out here listening. Matter of fact, I know there's some people listening who this will give them pause. And you know, if it's not the right opportunity for you, I bet you we know someone who might be the right opportunity for you as well. Um, right. We are known to refer to other agencies too, because sometimes it is just getting the right door and talking to the right people to find out what's the right fit for you. Right. Very much so. Nothing hurts from exploring. No. No, you got to ask. Yep. Got to ask. Okay. Thank you. Mm. It's that time. We are going to start winding down now. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you, uh, Kosh listeners. Uh, as you know, we are a work in progress. Uh, we are always trying to get better and make a better show for you. Um, I feel like uh, we've had great growth in recent times of listeners. Um, so keep telling your friends and family members and sharing. You know, we keep getting all these amazing guests. Um, it's, you know, I hear what I always hear is it's wonderful to have something that connects to the community like this, uh, to give voice to those people in the community. So we want to keep doing this and uh, we want to keep growing. So I think it's super important. Once again, uh, we are open to everything, criticism, celebration, whatever it is, but reach out to us at askthekosh at gmail.com. That is our email. Once again, askthekosh at gmail.com. Please, please, please reach out. And once again, uh, we do have a website where you can find all the episodes. We are closing in on 50 episodes. That's amazing, right? It's absolutely amazing. So we are close to 50 episodes and uh that 50 episodes actually it might be the next episode if you really want to know the truth <laughs> nonetheless um so close please check us out at um the kosh podcast.com once again that is the kosh podcast.com um share with friends and family let them know um there's some good episodes out here and finally, I am still working on people trying to help us with kicking off our segment, which we had our first uh, segment of Ask the Kosh. Uh, once again, Nicole, thank you for being the first person to call in. It is celebrated. Uh, but I'm, I'm asking other people, uh, Kosh listeners, call in with your questions and uh, give the guest and myself an opportunity. Let's, let's talk about it. It doesn't matter what it is. Um, even if it's a little controversial, you know, we'll we'll stick a toe in. We might not jump all the way in, but we'll stick a toe in. We'll talk about it. Okay. Um, yeah. But you know what time it is now. It's it's <laughs> it's my favorite time of the show. It is shout out time. Oh Don. You know about this, right? I know about this. Who are uh, you going to shout out to? Oh, no, no, no. Wait. I, I go second. I go second. You get to go <gasps> first. You're the guest. I know, but you're so interesting. To her. I just <laughs> like to hear you talk sometimes. Okay. You know what? I'm gonna do, We're going to change this around only because Don asked. And so my shout outs this week. Uh, first shout out goes to President Lori Carter over at Lawrence University. I got to go to her installment yesterday. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. That's all I can say. It was a powerful, powerful ceremony. Um, Shout out to the Lawrence students. If you don't know about those Lawrence students and the musical talents that are sitting on there, there was this gentleman that sold that one of the last um, uh, interludes or uh, not interludes, not the proper term, but one of the breaks in there and they were playing music. And the last song was um, This Little Light of Mine and this this gentleman with this voice 
Whew. Oh, wow. I mean, he blew, blew the house up. Um, shout out to African Heritage Inc. Um, thank you for hosting uh, this year's Juneteenth Day. Well, you, you host Juneteenth Day, period. No one does it really better than them. So special shout out to Sprina and Bola, the leaders there. Uh, we appreciate you in that event. Um, it's just well done. It's just super well done. Um, I would like to send a very, very special shout out to all of the students who are graduating this weekend. Hey, y'all. That's a hard road. I've been there. I'm with you. I feel it in your heart. But right now, you know what? It's time to feel grateful. Be grateful that you made it through. Um, So I want to celebrate you. And I want to celebrate those parents. Because they go along for the ride. Not just parents, the guardians, whoever you are, those aunts, those uncles, those those other mentors, whoever you are, coaches, all of you have helped these these people get to this end goal. You are so important. We we, the greater community, greater society, appreciate everything that you have done to help make our society better by putting these these critical thinkers back out into our communities. So we appreciate that. Uh, special shout out to Haley Stuber for graduating from UW Madison. Yeah, girl. Yeah. Yeah, girl. You know, um, shout out to Brandon Starks over at UW Oshkosh graduating, uh, the veteran student. I, I, I appreciate you, man. Congratulations. Cause I know this wasn't an easy road and, um, my final shout out goes out to the League of Credit Unions uh, because I sat on a panel this week for uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion, and we had an amazing conversation um, surrounding the business argument for diversity, equity, and inclusion. And know this if you need to be convinced, you need to look at your business because you're not forward thinking. And that's where I'm at with that. Okay. Sorry, Don. That was a lot of them. All right, Don, what do you got? I got two. Of course, I have to shout out to my staff. I have an amazing, wonderful staff. Um, we've done a lot of growth in five years, and now we're going to be hitting 10 staff members shortly. Ooh. That's up from four. So they're just amazing. They roll with the punches, and um, what they bring to the table is going to be able to allow us to grow even more and serve more kiddos. So I'm extremely proud of them. Okay. Um, and then I have to do a shout out to my boys. They're up in um, Beaver Dam this weekend on a camping trip um, for the spring campery for Boy Scouts. And I think they probably got a little wet last night. Uh-oh. So Ooh. I'm hoping they're drying out up there. Yes. Oh, that's not the good camping trip for the Boy Scouts. Well, apparently the troop that they joined, it rains every time they go camping. Oh. And I didn't necessarily believe them when they first told me this. Um, but considering the last weekend when we went and it was windy and storms were going through and we were outside freezing our little tails off, um, I fully understand and believe it now. <laughs> Rain will come in at one point throughout the weekend. There's a curse. This troop. Yep. They uh, are cursed. Well, to the shout outs to your team, to the Boy Scouts. <laughs> Those shout outs felt good today. They did. Yeah? yeah. Okay. All well, right. Well, we are in for the very last part of the show. And at this point, we give you an option A, B, and C. I like A, B, and C, right? Uh, all right. I was always, look, I'm not going to lie. When I took multiple ch- uh, choice tests and I didn't know the answer, it was always all of the above. That was, <laughs> it was the safe one because if I wasn't for sure, it was just one, just go with all. Uh, and that's just me or none of the above. It could be that too. Um, all right. The choice is A, it is time for parting words of wisdom. So you can either share some parting words of wisdom with the Kosh listeners or you can share what would your self today tell your 12 year old self to prepare for the future or option C all of the above. All of the above. Awesome. So a lot of times 
I get questions on what it's like to be an executive director. And when I think about, as a child, what you think about for being the boss, and I'm doing air quotes here. She totally is doing air quotes. (laughs) I don't think you realize what it means to be the boss. And I wish someone at my younger age would have told me to ask questions. Now, I was very fortunate I found out um, what my calling was, and this really is my calling. I love it. It's what drives me. But I also think when you have your images of being the boss, you're usually not thinking first one in, last one out. Oh, (laughs) true. You're not thinking about the weight that you carry each day to make sure that you have a good environment for your staff and that sometimes their lives... Um, livelihood relies on you. So ask questions. Research. I mean, nowadays, there are a lot of opportunities to explore career through school. That's true. We didn't have that when I was growing up. Take advantage of it. Talk to everyone. Explore everyone because you will not know what you're going to be. And Besides, we can grow up and change our mind anyway. Facts. Um, absolutely. We can change it five times if we want. Just make sure you ask questions. So that's my what I would tell myself. Okay. Parting words of wisdom? Parting words of wisdom. Um, it's a favorite phrase that I like to say that circles throughout the CASA network. I wish I knew who originally said it because I think they're brilliant. When you give a child a voice, you give them hope. When you give them hope, you give them the world. Yep. Um, powerful. <laughs> Beyond powerful. Wow. Brilliant. Brilliant. They are absolutely brilliant. So what'd you think? Loved it. The cash. The cash. Mm-hmm.